Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So I got a couple things on the bench this Friday, but before we do that, I promised last week at the beginning of this video, I'd give away this digital caliper. So let's go pick a winner for this guy. Okay, so I found this website called Comment Picker. I think this will fairly pick a winner for us. Uh, I've got the URL of last week's video plugged in. I've got it set to filter duplicate users. Uh, so if you guys commented more than once, you're still only entered once. Um, we'll go ahead and get comments. And there are 32 unique comments. So 32 of you are entered in the drawing. Let's pick a winner. All right, Britt Tolbert. Hopefully I did not butcher your name. Apologies if I did. Um, but you are the winner of the digital caliper. So congratulations. Uh, please go to my website, fpfdesigns.com. Um, scroll down, find the link for contact FPF. Uh, fill this out, make sure your email address is correct and reach out to me. Um, I will reach back out to you, uh, confirm that you are you and uh, we'll get these shipped out to you. And thank you all so much for your comments on the video. So many great ideas. I'll pop up a couple here on the screen of my favorites, uh, which is uh, using the wind up ethernet cable. Um, I love that one. I've, uh, I've got a box full of, you know, long lengths of ethernet cable that I use for various things. It always gets all tangled up. Um, I love the idea of joining, you know, together the, the, the pieces of leftover filament. Um, I, I'm not even going to try and pronounce your name there. Apologies. But if you want to, you know, link in the comment to a YouTube video and, and show that I'd love to see how that works. Sounds like a great idea for, you know, test prints that you don't care what the colors are, just joining all the pieces of filament together. Um, and uh, Renee, hopefully I'm saying that uh, right. I, I love the 3D printer pen idea as well. Okay, so back on the bench, the two parts I've got here are 3D printed in TPU. And if they look a little worse for wear, it's because they've been outside in my yard in direct sunlight for almost four years. And again, these are printed from TPU. TPU is a flexible filament. And what's amazing is they still have their original durometer. They're still very flexible. And they, other than the little bit of fading, which you can see the difference here between this color and this color, it's because in where these are installed, this flat washer sits here and covers that part up. So this part here has not gotten direct sunlight. But other than the slight fading, uh, they're still incredibly tough. They're still flexible. I'm really, really impressed with how TPU has held up outdoors. When I printed these and installed them, I wasn't sure how long it would last. And I thought, well, worst case scenario, it doesn't cost that much to make more. But guys, I can't think of a better filament to use outdoors uh, in direct sunlight. This has held up so well. Now, sure, I mean, you might have applications where you can't use a flexible filament, but a lot you can. In fact, some other items I just realized right before shooting this video, I had this in mind, but I've got this uh, bucket here of these guys. Uh, maybe you can guess what these are. I just, these were also in my yard for just shy of four years. Uh, we had a garden with chicken wire around it and the chicken wire was held in place with steel rebar that I cut the length and just hammered into the ground. But the rebar was sticking up out of the ground, you know, and, and it wants somebody to fall and get hurt. So I printed these caps. And these same thing, they've held up incredibly well. And before I removed them, I actually tried to hammer a piece of rebar through the end of one and I couldn't do it. Uh, again, just really, really impressed with how well TPU has held up outdoors. So here's the filament that I'm talking about. This is the Sane Smart TPU. These guys are not a sponsor of the channel or anything like that. This is just the brand I use. Um, I've got it in gray, I've got it in black. Both of them work very well. I've gone through a couple rolls of each. The one downside, and this is nothing against Sane Smart, just you know, working with TPU in general, it really, really likes to suck up moisture. You can't leave this stuff sitting out for more than six hours uh, uh, before you need to dry it right before you print. And when I first got this, uh, I went, it worked right out of the box. You know, when I opened up the sealed package, I did a test print, worked fine. The first actual thing I was trying to make with it, it just, the print just, the, 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 the layer quality was horrible. It was coming apart, bubbles in it. Um, eventually I tried drying it in my oven. That worked well, but I overheated it a bit. Uh, and I started looking into options and uh, food dehydrators work really, really well. So if you do want to start working with TPU um, or even PETG, PETG is just not quite as bad as TPU. You've got to dry it before you use it. In fact, actually, let's go take a look at the food dehydrator I use. 
All right, apologies for all the noise in here, but this is what I'm talking about. So I can pop, uh, I think I've had three rolls of filament in here if I pull the, the, uh, the rack out. And I've got a cheat sheet right on top uh, that shows me my temperature and time for everything. So this is TPU. Uh, so I am at a, at least 131 degrees uh, for greater than four hours. So see, I do start, stop. See, I want five hours. 35 and then this is what I love about this is this keep warm function so this guy's gonna run for five hours at 135 degrees but then it's gonna run for another 24 hours at a minimal setting keeping this stuff super nice and dry and ready to go so when I actually come down here to print it's all set all right so if you want to check that guy out or this filament I will link that down below in the show more and when I talk about linking stuff they're always going to be Amazon affiliate links it's a great way to support the channel if you learned something today. It doesn't cost you any different whether you buy it through my link or whether you search for this on Amazon. It's just if you click my link, I get a couple pennies, and they do add up, and I thank you guys. So let's go outside and take a look at what these parts uh, actually do. Oh, almost forgot my schlong. Thanks, China. I really don't think I could make up a better brand name for this. Okay, so we're up here in my backyard, and this is a trampoline. And when I put this guy in uh, four years ago, I had really two important considerations. Uh, number one, uh, I've seen way too many videos and pictures of these guys just flying across your yard and they get up into the nearest tree line uh, when there's a heavy wind um, or in a bad storm. And also, I don't think there's a single flat spot in my entire yard. Uh, so, and I did want this guy to sit level so you don't end up like, you know, bouncing off at some weird direction. Uh, so what I did is, I measured out all the locations where the legs for this guy were going to sit and on each one of those locations I poured concrete and you can't see the concrete, the concrete's basically level with the ground and then to solve the problem of uh, the pitch uh, to the ground um, I cut different thickness of these wood blocks so over here this is basically the highest corner this one and the one in the back these are sitting on just a thin piece of five quarter board uh, and all these have a groove cut in them for the, uh, the leg and then over here at the lowest spot, this is like a, like I think these are a full size six by six with another piece of five quarter board uh, underneath of it so that this whole thing is level. Um, but to mount uh, these legs to uh, the, the, the pressure treated pieces of wood here is where those parts come in. Okay, so the threaded part that you see is actually a piece of all thread and this extends all the way down through uh, the piece of pipe that makes up the leg, uh, the piece of wood here and anchors all the way down into the poured concrete underneath. And I, I needed to solve a couple different problems here. Uh, number one, I wanted a way to mount this that was gonna be a little bit flexible. I could just put a washer and nut right on this, but I wanted a little bit of give because this guy does try and move around, like it flexes back and forth uh, as you're jumping on the trampoline. I also didn't wanna cut this surface up and have this rust out. Um, and I didn't want any sharp edges uh, so that if kids are running around the outside uh, that they get, you know, that they don't get cut on this. So. This is the first piece and this follows the curvature of the pipe. So we drop this guy down on top, our flat washer goes next, and then our nylock nut. And it's going to be a little tricky to get started on here because I cut all these threaded rods off um, so the threads aren't perfect at the top. And then if we take, if we take our schlong and set this guy to forward. And you can see I'm tightening that till it just starts to compress. That gives me a little bit of flex, again, as this guy moves around um, so that we're not binding up. And then this top piece here uh, not only protects that threaded rod from rust at the top, but also makes sure that we don't have uh, you know, any sharp edges at the top. So I think that does it for out here. Let's go take a look at the design of this guy in SketchUp. Okay, so here's the design for each one of these. And I guess we'll start out with, uh, let's call this a mounting bracket. Um, for the, the leg itself. Uh, starting at the top, we have a recess for that round washer so that the surface of the washer sits flush with the surface of the mounting bracket. And then of course, this follows the diameter of that pipe. And we have a center bore here um, for that threaded rod uh, to come up through. And really that's it. The rest of this is more just aesthetics than anything else. Uh, and so that we don't have any hard edges. 
The one other thing worth pointing out is that uh, I varied the infill on this until I found what had kind of the right amount of squish as I tightened down on the nut. Um, and I ended up printing these at an infill of 25%. I found that to be just right. And then the other component is just the cap that goes on the top of that threaded rod. And this is obviously a really simple piece. Um, the thing that you want to do anytime you're capping, um, you know, something that's sharp, either these or for my, the, uh, the, those pieces that cap the rebar is just to make sure you're leaving yourself enough material um, at the top that it is going to hold up in case someone actually falls on it or presses down on it really hard. In fact, as a bonus, let me go ahead and bring up the design for that rebar uh, topper as well. Okay, here's that cap that's designed to go on the top of a piece of rebar as well. And again, most of this design is really aesthetic. Um, the only thing that really matters is the, uh, the center bore here uh, that fits over the rebar. And I think I sized this one for half inch rebar, uh, but you could adjust the scaling uh, to work for any size rebar. And, you know, looking at the bottom here, um, Notice this is beveled instead of curved. That's because this is the part that sits flat against the build plate. And if you've ever tried to print a curve, uh, the overhang is just too much uh, when it first starts to curve. Um, so I used a bevel for this part here. And again, just gotta make sure you have plenty of material between where the bottom of your, your bore is um, and where the top part here is. So if you were to actually fall in the sky, uh, it's gonna hold up. Um, with CPU, the material is so strong, you don't need to have that much there. Um, I'm going to stop short of saying it's indestructible, but I've never managed to pull apart a TPU print that I've printed. Um, I've squeezed them in the press and the vise, uh, and they always come back to the original shape. It's amazing stuff. If you haven't printed with it, check it out. And I'm glad to say that after four years in my yard, um, you know, it's holding up to, you know, the elements as well. I live in, in, uh, in Northeast Pennsylvania. So we've got a pretty big swing between, you know, winter and summer. So this stuff sees a lot of abuse um, and plenty of sun year round. All right, guys, I think that is it for the design. As always, everything I have featured in today's video uh, is available for free download as an STL on my site, fpfdesigns.com. That is linked right down in the description of this video. You can just hit the show more and expand it out and take you right to my site. If you learned something today, if you enjoyed this video, please take an extra second, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. I put out a new video like this every single Friday uh, and you guys really seem to enjoy the giveaway for the digital calipers. So tell me what you'd like to see next. I'm thinking about maybe a roll of filament. Um, you know, we could do another tool. Tell me what you guys are interested in down in the comments below. Guys, I'll see you next Friday.